colonization. Would you rather been colonized by the Aztecs or by the Christians? That's a crazy thought because because Christians were a little different back then. The Christians were a little different back then, and the Aztecs were probably about that life. Yeah, depend on the you know. <laughs> they was depend warriors. On the ones. So yeah, someone uh, would take your head. Someone, someone y'all could be. Some of them y'all be cool with. I would have been running for it. <laughs> Hiding, I guess. I don't know. That's tough. There are two kinds of people in the world. The colonizers and the colonized. At least according to the left, which in recent years has labeled all of history's victors the unjust beneficiaries of settler colonialism. This pejorative phrase has cropped up everywhere the left dominates. The universities, the media, even the government. Its purpose is to delegitimize every Western country that the left doesn't like. America, Britain, Spain, Portugal, France, Israel, and so on. But the phrase doesn't mean all that much when you consider that every single regime and tribal society in history was established by settlers and colonizers of one kind or another. To put it another way, not since Adam in the Garden of Eden has any people sprouted out of the ground. And in the case of Adam, you might recall, he had a little help. Borders, nations, and regimes have changed for all of history as people have multiplied, expanded, and moved around. The aim of the decolonization activists is to return land from the people who currently possess it to the people who previously possessed it. Okay. But that doesn't solve the problem. It only pushes the problem one step back in time. In 1980, the United States Supreme Court ruled that the American government had illegally taken the Black Hills of South Dakota, the site of Mount Rushmore, from the Lakota Sioux. Hmm. The court ordered the government to pay the Lakota the initial offering price of the land, plus interest. But even the liberal court did not order the U.S. to vacate and give the land back to the Indians. Hmm. How could it? A quarter million Americans live there. In any case, the Sioux refused the money. And it's a lucky thing because the payment would raise just as many problems as it would solve. Mm, Because the Sioux did not magically sprout out of the Black Hills. Mm. In fact, the Sioux possessed the Black Hills for less time than the United States has. Mm. The Sioux took the land from the Cheyenne in the late 18th century. If the U.S. is going to pay the immediate previous owners of the land, shouldn't the Sioux pay the Cheyenne? That goes back to slavery kind of thing. the Cheyenne pay the Kiowa and the Crow who owned Mm. the land prior to the Cheyenne? Mm. And what about the Comanche and the Arapaho, Uh both of whom claimed the territory before the Kiowa and the Crow, who lost it to the Cheyenne, who lost it to the Lakota, who lost it to the U.S.? Mm. And how exactly are we supposed to decolonize the Black Hills? Even if we could identify the right tribe, is there even anyone around today who could seriously claim ownership 10 generations later? Is there any statute of limitations here? Until about 75 years ago, everyone recognized the right of conquest. If you took land and could hold it long enough, it was yours. Then, liberal utopians convinced themselves that they could outlaw human nature. But they couldn't. People continued to grow, explore, and conquer. Right. And why do they do it? The decolonization activists will tell you the answer is plunder. Material gain. Wow. And for most of history, in most of the world, that has been true. The boy few exceptions, it should be noted, were found in the West. Yes, one motivation of many Western colonizers was wealth. But it was not the only one. They were frequently motivated by higher ideals as well. The proof is that most of them not only didn't get rich, but were personally impoverished for their efforts. The pilgrims of the Mayflower gave up lives of relative comfort to settle in America, and half of them died in the attempt. Hmm. George Washington lost much of his net worth during the Revolutionary War. Thomas Jefferson died a debtor as a consequence of his many years in public service. Really? Even those who proudly referred to themselves as conquistadors, the men leftists call thieves and plunderers, were often motivated by higher ideals, specifically to spread faith in God and the adoption of biblical morality. Five years before Columbus sailed the ocean blue, the Aztec Empire, which itself had conquered any number of tribes, sacrificed tens of thousands of victims to their patron demon over the course of just four days. Wow. Hernan Cortez witnessed these sorts of sacrifices when he arrived in 1521 at the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. Aztec priests sliced open the chests of sacrificial victims 
and offered their still beating hearts as a oh sacrifice to the gosh. demons before kicking their dead bodies down the steps of the temple. Oh, oh my God. Happily, Yuck. Cortez conquered the Aztecs, stopped the human sacrifice, and introduced the natives to Christianity. Those who oppose human sacrifice, and I hope you include yourself in that group, must consider this an unambiguously positive development. This is not to say that Western colonizers didn't commit their share of crimes. They certainly did. It is to say that not all colonization is equal. Some forms are better than others. Mm -hmm. So here's a useful thought experiment. Who would you rather be colonized by? Christians or Aztecs? <laughs> I'm Michael Knowles, host of The Michael Knowles Show for Prager University. Okay, and I'm going to need Thank Prager to get them an updated picture of Jesus. Because <laughs> <laughs> blonde hair and pale skin wasn't it, boo. <laughs> Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Okay. But, so this was really good. So Christians, because that was so interesting. The Aztecs were sacrificing to their demon god. So people always want to say, you know, I'm Indian. But the Indian religion was extremely pagan. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And we know that when you sacrifice blood to a deity, that's a spit in God's face. And that's, that's you know, biblically, the God required a sacrifice of blood. And that's crazy how even back then they would sacrifice to demons because it was the same sacrifice to bring them whatever they want. But they would never, you you don't get it because there's no entity. Right. That you're, there's no live entity that you're serving with mm -hmm. demons. But, yeah. um, yeah, so Chris, but I know people going to go in and going to say a bunch of stuff in the comment section. Hey, listen, nobody has done right on this earth. None, no one. But there's one that you would rather be on this side than that side. True. And, but it may, I mean, it could have been maybe not the Aztecs, but maybe there were certain groups of Indians if they were the ones that would have conquered they were a lot more peaceful and you could have a, there may be in a group that could have jailed you could have that been more accepting of people mm -hmm. but from history i remember that's possible there were a little bit that accepted like with black people and stuff like that mm -hmm. but then the most were a attackers and trying to protect their space mm -hmm. so you would die yeah but some but you we've seen clips to where some aztec people were hanging they were hanging with people and they weren't killing people mm -hmm. but there's a lot that would kill people yeah it was, every man was for himself back then, you know, pretty much. Yeah. But or each tribe or whatever, you know, was for themselves. Had their own way of doing things. Had their own way. So who would you rather have been colonized by? I said the Christians. Yeah, me too. I said the Christians. Because we know they was ruthless as well at some point in, in other places across the world. However, with this information, I, I mean, I knew the Indians were always about that life. Yeah. However, in this situation, uh -huh. I, it would definitely be Christians. For no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Christians back then, they they weren't as forgiving as we are today. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> they weren't as forgiving. No doubt. You be burned. You be burned. And, as, and are we are we forgiving? Because you know the way we look at Some. certain things, it's like you know. It's judge you judge. We can we can be changed. As, our um as far our our belief and our um body as Christian Christians can be still super judgy people. So um. But that's not the conversation we're going in no, today. I will say that. So I'm going to say we unanimously me say if we were colonized, it'd be by the Christians versus the Aztecs. And um, I know a lot of people going to comment in that section and say this and this, but. It's OK. It's freedom. Freedom of speech. It is. As long as you keep it. Keep it non derogatory. We can we cannot agree. You know, you can say how you feel, but let's not be attacking. That's not. All right, man. All right. 2024. Be more. Talk less. We'll see you on the next one. Say Love you guys. Chest. Appreciate your support. All right.